All right, so my name is Stepan Nasser. I am a PhD student at the Ulysses Supercomputing Center. <coughs> and um, I've been looking into the um, behavior of the HPC applications that we have running on our production supercomputers on uh, on the 8 based prototypes, specifically Thunder X2. Um, right, the outline, I'll say something to the hardware we have software libraries use and then I will present my results. Um, mm -hmm. So the supercomputers at uh, Urich currently the biggest one is Joules, um, Xeon scalable uh, base platform. We also have Eureka which uh, comprises of a cluster and a booster and Cubase 3. If you take a look at this, we've got Intel, 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 Intel with some NVIDIA in there. Yeah. So <laughs> there is some room for competition. Um, we also have some prototypes, Euron by IBM plus NVIDIA and Yulia by Cray. But Yulia is also Xeon based. <laughs> so now the more interesting part are the GSC ARM prototypes. Uh, we've got a, a couple of uh, systems by Huawei and also the KVM Thunder X2 uh, processes. And um, uh, the Huawei machines are currently uh, weren't in the state uh, or weren't set up enough so that I could run a lot of benchmarks on them. So I will be focusing on the Thunder X2 nodes. So uh, a couple of words to the software and libraries used. First to the uh, performance uh, measurement tools. On the Xeon platform, I have been using the HPC Toolkit, uh, the latest version, straight from Git. Uh, it's an open source statistical sampling uh, application. Uh, it can measure performance counters and it avoids instrumentation. And on the ARM side, I have been using ARM Map, which is part of ARM Forge. And it also does statistical sampling, also avoids instrumentation. And uh, it uh, has a couple more features. Uh, so, yeah, um, on the compilers uh, and libraries used uh, for ARM, I have been using the ARM HPC compiler version 18.4, and on the Xeon side, um, the Intel uh, compiler suit 2018.1163, OpenMPI 3.1.2 on ARM, and ARM performance libraries 18.4. Emulation, because I've also been looking into SVE, uh, the ARM instruction emulator 18.2 and QEMO 3.0. Now let's get to the applications. So the first application I want to talk about is KKR Nano. It's uh, a DFT electron structure code. It's written in Fortran 2003 and has support for MPI and OpenMP. It scales linearly and it's mostly dominated by uh, complex arithmetic blast kernels, <laughs> ZGEM specifically. And uh, there is a mini app derived from KKR Nano, which is called Mini KKR. This is what I have been working with. And um, basically, there is a block sparse matrix matrix multiplication there. So there is a lot of Z gems uh, being called with very small matrices. This application is part of the Haiku Club. Here is uh, a couple of results that I've taken from our web page. The last slide uh, shows the weak scaling uh, by increasing MPI. Uh, number of MPI ranks together with number of atoms. Uh, and uh, the right uh, uh, um, graph shows the scaling to the full machine. Uh, I believe this is the Blue Gen Q Zhu uh, Queen machine that we had. Um, just a screenshot of a profile. I have been generating profile. This is on the Xeon. Um, you can see that ZGEM dominates with 73.7%, the same for uh, uh, ARM machine here, even 84%. Now let's skip the screenshots and get to the um, summary of the whole thing. Um, I have been profiling with one process and thread and then uh, went up to up to eight threads and um, also to the full node, but those results are uh, I wish all later. You can see that uh, ZGEM completely dominates this uh, application and um, Surprisingly, we have uh, a lot more t uh, CPU time spent on the Xeon for this uh, synchronization. Um, 
and um, but this course might have been hidden. There has been a, a, an unknown routine in the Ampere library that uh, might have been have had something to do with uh, CPU synchronization. So some properties of these kernels, ZGEM, as I've uh, already mentioned, this is actually a blot sparse matrix matrix multiplication. So there is a lot of ZGEM calls on small matrices um, called in a loop. The other kernels is ZXP, ZXP, Z.U. There's also blast kernels, except for the ZXP. This is not actually a blast kernel, but a der der derivative of ZXP. They contribute under 5% to the whole uh, compute load, and they also uh, applied to 16 uh, element vectors. Next application is quantum espresso. It's also an electron structure code written, uh, uh, written in Fortran and uh, MPI. It also has OpenMP support. Um, this is dominated by complex arithmetics as well. And again, this is uh, dominated by ZGEM. Uh, this time around, however, by large matrices, something on the order of 5,000 times 5,000 elements and uh, this is a profile I will skip the screenshot and go to the summary um, I've the profile shown is for uh, 28 processes and um, here we can see that although almost the, the same amount relative amount of time is spent on the uh, ZGEM uh, the Thunder X2 uh, node spends a lot of time on um, MPI synchronization uh, this is, however, uh, can be explained because this Thunder X2 processor that uh, I have been using is a pre-production A2 chip, and uh, it has known internode um, communication uh, performance issues. So this is most likely uh, the case here. Um, a word of, on ZGEM in Quantum Espresso. This is large dense matrix matrix multiplication with higher arithmetic <coughs> uh, intensity. The other um, kernels also contribute less than 5% to the uh, overall compute time. The next code I want to talk about is NEST. This is a modern C++ code, a simulator for spiking neurons. Uh, is a part of the HiQ club as well and has a specific pro uh, property that uh, if you increase the number of uh, MPI uh, processes, then the memory requirements per MPI process will go up. Here are the results I've taken from the HiQ uh, uh, page. <coughs> uh, the top graph shows again the weak scaling runtime with increasing MPI processes and network size. And the other graph shows the uh, phenomenon that I have been talking about with increasing uh, memory consumption per node. I'll skip the uh, screenshots and go to the summary. Um, here we see that uh, almost uh, the same time, uh, so, so it's um, the application uh, comprises of a initialization phase and a simulation phase, and almost the same amount of time is spent there. The differences that can be observed between Thunder X2 and the Xeon processor uh, are uh, on the um, exp and pow uh, calculations. Um, however, um, uh, it is known that uh, exp and pow with RPL, uh, this is a libm issue. They uh, are rather slow. So there is an ARM math library uh, that I haven't been using here that is uh, a lot faster. So this might explain why we see these numbers. And um, Another thing to mention about NEST, there is no single dominant kernel, uh, which, uh, like in the case of Quantum Espresso uh, or KKR Nano. And um, apart from the X and Pow, there is not really much you can yeah, pick uh, which dominates the computation. Uh, so I want to show the, um, the performance comparisons between a 14-core Xeon Broadwell processor and Thunder X2. However, there are some caveats uh, which I have been uh, told uh, to mention. Um, first of all is um, pre-production hardware, A2 versus uh, production chips. And uh, uh, there's also some configuration issues, for example, all the performance benchmarks that I've done uh, were performed 
in the 4x SMT uh, mode, so four threads per core, uh, which isn't uh, optimal, perfor doesn't perform optimally for every uh, application. And um, other things like uh, I couldn't pin threads to uh, the CPU cores, so um, there are some NUMA issues, and there is also the thing with the uh, ARM math library, which um, is the case in uh, Nest. So, if you saw, have seen uh, other Thunder X2 benchmarks, they have been looking very good. These look a bit different. <laughs> um, we can, uh, for, for a very uh, blast-dominated, um, uh, dense, uh, arithmetic um, application, uh, AVX2 uh, does have a um, advantage because it can push 16 uh, double flops per cycle versus the eight uh, flops on um, the um, Thunder X2. And also there is a difference on the, um, of the uh, uh, CPU frequency. Uh, additionally to that, lower MPI cost in Broadwell because of uh, the uh, pre-production chips. Mini-KKR, I've left the quotient in. We would expect if uh, it is dominated by ZGEM that uh, the difference would be uh, basically 2.9 because double the uh, FPU performance, 2.9 gigahertz versus 2 gigahertz, so 2 times 2.9 divided by 2 is 2.9, <laughs> and we see it actually uh, getting uh, to this factor when we scale up uh, the problem. Uh, next, we see that uh, we have roughly double the performance uh, on the Xeon, and um, here we lose the AVX <coughs> advantage because it isn't uh, um, as... Um, yeah, compute uh, can, isn't as densely arithmetic as uh, the blast-dominated mini KKR or quantum espresso, uh, but we actually beat it at the very large problems and very large uh, number of processes, because again, this only has 28 hardware threads. The Thunder X2 has a lot more. Um, right, but it actually uh, one thing that we can see is it scales actually really well with the number of processes on the Thunder X2. Um, uh, platform. I want to say a couple of words to the status of SVE at the JSC and um, first our expectations and what we think is uh, uh, how we are capable of exploit this. So for example in the case of Nest there isn't a single dominant kernel uh, and we think that there are a, couple, a, a lot of loops that um, um, aren't vectorized, uh, but could be vectorized uh, with uh, SVE, probably auto-vectorized by the compiler, so we expect that auto-vectorization uh, will play a role. Dense blast kernels should perform better if we go to higher uh, vector width. And another thing with SVE, there are instructions for complex arithmetic, which is quite kind of rare, and we expect this to, um, to be able to leverage this as well. So, on the status of SVS, JSC, um, MikaCare, care Nest, and Quantum Espresso, uh, we have compiled with SVE enabled with ARM HPC compiler 18.4 and GCC 8.2.0. And uh, we have also written custom SVE kernels for Mini KKR. Uh, those are ZGEMS XP, and Z.U, so we have experience with uh, the ACLE as well. Uh, Functional emulation, we've got correct results when emulating with ARMY and QEMU, uh, both with uh, ARM HPC compiler and GCC 8.2. There were some issues with OpenMP with both of those, um, but that's a known issue with the um, emulation. Um, there's also emulation with uh, the GEM5 uh, simulator. Uh, a colleague of mine, Namho, is working on, on it and it's currently a work of progress, but we have seen some first successes with uh, simple programs. And uh, to include this, um, 
we, uh, despite the benchmark uh, that uh, I have shown that might don't show uh, as much adventurous numbers as the others, um, we think that uh, they show promising performance when we factor in all the uh, uh, disadvantages these benchmark rounds had. Uh, still, uh, in some cases, was able to beat the roadwall system. We have functional SVE uh, emulation, and uh, we do expect a better performance with SVE, especially in blast-heavy application, and also in applications which uh, can't really be vectorized uh, manually, such as uh, Nest. Uh, we expect that the octovectorizer will perform better. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Any questions from the audience? No, I will ask one then. Okay. Uh, uh, I've seen a lot of performance numbers, but I think that when uh, where Cadian systems really shine is when you take into account power consumption. Have you looked into that? Are you planning uh, on doing something like that? No, but uh, that's something I uh, also want to look into. <laughs> Um, so, with respect in particular to KKR Nano, you mentioned that this is dominated by small complex matrix So, th those are actually big uh, sparse matrix multiplications. Ah, forgive me, okay. Yeah, so the, the multi there is basically it calls small uh, blocks, uh, Zijamon small blocks, uh, block, yeah, matrix blocks. Okay, so because lots of work has been done on small matrix multipliers, there's a library from Intel, the LibXS X. SX, SF, SF, yeah, yeah. SXMM, yeah. And were you using this? I have not been using this. All right. Okay. More questions? Okay, I think then this is it. Thank you again, Stefan.